Hello, how are you doing? My name is Benjamin Baxiera, and today we are going to talk about how to write an academic essay. Okay, these are some basics for you, high school, college students. All right. Um, as I said, my name is Ben Baxiera. I am an English instructor with over 15 years experience. I uh, I taught high school for a year, and I've been teaching college now for 12 years. I'm an instructor over at City College of San Francisco. I have a BA from uh, this institution where I'm at right now lecturing, uh, UC Berkeley. I have a teaching credential, uh, a program certificate from San Francisco State University, a master's in English from San Francisco State University, and I also hold a law degree. Uh, from the University of California Hastings College of the Law. I know I don't really uh, have to say those things, but I do uh, um, I do predict that you think it's important that you're getting some advice from someone who knows their what they're talking about, okay? Um, so um, if you want to learn more about me or see more educational videos, please watch Barrio Bushido TV. It's on YouTube for more educational videos. Let's get right to it, all right? The academic essay. There are six things, generally, that are required for an academic essay, okay? Now, different instructors may call these things by different names, okay? I'm gonna use the names that I have used for the past 15 years, okay? One. For an essay to be an essay, it must have an academic essay structure. We're going to talk about that structure here in a moment. First, I'm going to list all of these concepts. It cannot be an essay. It's not a poem. It's not a short story. It's not a business letter or a legal document. There is a specific structure we'll get to here in a moment. An essay must have a unifying principle, and it must stick to that unifying principle. This is the concept of unity. The, the point that controls the entire essay is called the thesis statement. You must stick to that thesis statement, to proving that thesis statement for the entire essay. In each individual body paragraph, there is a unifying point as well. It is called a topic sentence. You must stick to that uh, concept of the topic sentence for that particular paragraph. The next concept is the concept of coherence. This is about connecting ideas together. So, you must connect, make a logical, smooth connection from one sentence to another. Also, you must have a smooth connection, a logical connection from one paragraph to the next paragraph. Coherence. The most important aspect of any essay is its development, okay? I'll put a little star right there or asterisk for you, uh, just so that you know how important this is, okay? Uh, this is your proof, all right? You have a thesis that you want to stick to, but the thesis does not prove itself. In your body paragraphs, you will develop them using a variety of techniques. For example, Comparison and contrast, cause and effect, analogy, narration, okay? These are ways to prove. This provides evidence for your points, okay? Development. This is the meat of the essay. Instructors, professors, look for a style in your work. Now, since we're talking about the academic essay, ideally, 
they are looking for a university level style. What exactly does that mean? Of course, I'm going to discuss that in more depth, but I'll give you a bit of it right now. Style, the words that you choose, the diction, the rhythm of your sentences, the length of your sentences, the way you prove ideas, the examples that you give, those all contribute to this thing called style. Last point that is important for an academic essay is its clarity, all right? Your ideas should be clear. You must make sure that you edit your work um, for grammatical problems. Also, you should be trying to make your sentences concise, precise, clearly understandable, all right? Now, these things are not working in this fashion. First you have structure, then you have unity, then you have coherence. All of this is working at the same time. We'll talk about each one of these uh, concepts individually now. But first, please allow me to guzzle some water, okay? All right, <clears throat> let's go a little bit further into this concept of the academic essay structure, all right? This is a different structure than the structure of a short story or the structure of a legal piece of writing, okay, or a legal analysis. So, for example, when I was in law school, we learned in the IRAC formula. Issue, rule, analysis, conclusion. For every single uh, a paragraph, you were supposed to spot the issues that were involved, give the rule of law, then analyze the situation, and offer a conclusion, all right? That has uh, the legal format attached to it. That is not the academic essay format. So for the academic essay, there are, there's first uh, the introductory structure, all right? And I am using this reverse pyramid to show you what you are supposed to do in an introduction for an academic essay, all right? Now note here, it starts off broadly and then narrows down to a specific point. So I'll write that down here, okay? You start with a broad idea, okay, all right? Of course, that broad idea should be somewhat related uh, uh, to your thesis because you're introducing your thesis. That is the point of the introduction, okay? By the end of this, and if you can imagine that each one of these lines represents a sentence, okay? You go broad and you whittle down. By the time you finish that first paragraph, you should have here, at the end, your thesis statement, okay? And what is a thesis? A thesis is a specific and significant assertion. <clears throat> you want to make sure that your thesis is specific. If you write a thesis that is too broad, the problem will be that you are promising too much. You will not be able to fulfill that thesis. If you write a nice, narrow thesis, you are giving much more focus to you and to your reader. All right? This thesis is a promise that this is what you will discuss and this is what you will prove in your essay. It should be significant. No one wants to read mundane cliches. Make sure that it's interesting, thought-provoking, all right? It's an assertion. It's an assertion. So note that a thesis cannot be a question, okay? It is an assertion, a declaration, all right? 
Now, we're going to go further into uh, these, uh, uh, the structure here. The body paragraphs do not follow this introductory inverted pyramid style. The topic, I'm sorry, the body paragraphs follow a traditional pyramid style. Okay, all right? And what you have here is you have topic sentences that start off each one of the paragraphs. Okay, all right? So this is your unifying principle for each particular paragraph. The topic sentence has two functions. It goes backwards. Each one of these topic sentences goes backwards, okay? It moves backwards in that it is proving part of the thesis. No individual topic sentence can prove the entire thesis. It also has another job. The other job that it does is that the topic sentence is the point that you are promising that will be discussed in each particular paragraph, all right? And so they are moving forward as well, okay? All right? The last part of the uh, uh, structure for an academic essay is the conclusion. And for the conclusion, I'm going to give you this circle, okay? All right? As a model. <clears throat> what the conclusion does is it wraps everything up. It reasserts the thesis, and it summarizes the main point of the essay. Here is your opportunity to make sure that your reader has read the main points that you wanted them to get from your essay. It is also your last opportunity to make the reader feel something. So it's at this point that you may, you know, depending on your topic, may, maybe you want your reader to be angry. Perhaps you want your reader to be inspired or to become curious. This is your last opportunity to give that energy to your reader. Note, for your conclusion, you should not be giving any new ideas because if you give new ideas, you will have to develop them. This is not the place for you to offer new ideas. You should be proving everything right here in the body. Okay? One more thing that I want to say that I uh, hadn't mentioned earlier is that the introduction, you are not proving anything here. Not yet. Your job here is to introduce the topic and your thesis statement. Some uh, say that you should be hooking your reader, okay? Provoking your reader to think, all right? That is the function of the introduction. All right, since there are no questions, because nobody's here, all right, except for uh, me and uh, the video uh, takers, I will move on at this point. <clears throat> Unity. Okay, now, uh, um, I, it may s sound like I'm repeating myself, but remember, the unifying principle for the entire essay is the thesis statement. This is what you must stick to for the entire essay. I am going to give you an example thesis in a moment, and also example body paragraphs. Okay, all right? Also. Unifying principle, the concept of unity. This is your unifying principle for each particular body paragraph. Check your work. Check your work. Ask yourself, after you've written your essay, did I stick to my point? If you have not stuck to your point, you have two options available. One, you can change your body so that it, you stick to your thesis. The other option available is that you can 
change your thesis so that it fits more to what is actually in the body. Consider this a working thesis until you have to turn it in, okay? Until the last moment that you have to turn it in, all right? Okay, uh, topic sentences, this is the idea that you stick to for the entire essay, all right? Let's go into coherence briefly, all right? You have a duty to show the logical relationship between one sentence and another, all right? So note here, each one of these sentences should have a logical relationship to the next. This paragraph should have a logical connection to that paragraph. This paragraph should have a logical connection here, etc. Okay, all right? So one way to think about the essay is that nothing stands alone. So this is not just there by itself. Neither is this or this or this, nor the conclusion, right? It is all working together simultaneously. Okay, all right? I'm going to give you um, um, something that I think, an image that will help you understand the concept of coherence, all right? And how everything should be tied together, and that it's your duty to tie things together, okay? So, okay, now. You may not understand at all what's on the board, okay, all right? Um, it looks like just a bunch of dots to you, okay? Um, but I think it's a masterpiece. I think each one of these is a genius idea. But I have not connected the dots for you. And therefore, you can't see the picture. You can't appreciate the picture. It is my duty as the writer to connect the dots for you, okay? And so, this is the picture that I wanted you to see. This is how much of a genius artist I am. See? Yay! Right? Okay? This is it. This is the picture that I wanted to see. But you could not appreciate that picture when the dots were not connected. Note here, if I do not have coherence, your reader is seeing this. They may say, wow, interesting idea. But I don't understand how that idea connects to this. It is your job to connect the dots together. Let's move on to the next uh, and most important part of essay writing, the development. Development. This is the proof. This is the evidence, OK? There are various ways to prove your ideas in an essay. You can give facts. You can give statistics. You can give a comparison and contrast. Show a cause and effect. You can give an analogy. Something is like something else. You can, if it's relevant, give a narrative, okay, or narration as a, a tool to develop and help prove your point, okay? So there are a variety of ways to prove your ideas. Now, what is a way? How are you going to get good? Since this is the most important part of essay writing, how do you get good at development? You must read. Challenge yourself to read uh, intellectual works. Get involved in intellectual activities. Then you will see how other people who are thinkers, like yourself, prove their ideas. Also, reading, you'll be able to model, hopefully, the way that very good writers prove and develop their ideas. Let's move on to the next one. Style, okay? Every writer has their own certain style. We're talking now not about creative writing style or a purple prose poetic style. We're talking about academic essay style, all right? So uh, part of that is that you are in a school of scholars, all right? So you must understand that you're going to be expected to have a university level style. How can you promote your university level style? Choose words that are concise, 
and that are best representative for your ideas. I'm not asking you or telling you to sound super intellectual. No, that's not it. Do something that shows who you are and who you want to be as a scholar. Okay, all right? Choose that right word. Sometimes that means looking in the thesaurus. All right? Sometimes that means using a certain image. That adds to your style as well. The rhythm of your sentences adds to your writing style. So sometimes, for a complex idea, you might have to have a longer type of sentence, a three, four line sentence. However, think about this. Sometimes, when you want to make a very stark point, perhaps you want a fragment or a three word sentence for uh, added emphasis for drama. Okay, so that contributes to style as well. <clears throat> the examples or the way that you develop your ideas can help with your style. Students many times like to use examples to prove their points. Note here, examples, it, 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 it's, it's not bad to use examples, but you have such an arsenal that you can use for your development. Why not, for example, instead of having examples everywhere here, and though I just said for example, okay, uh, but what you can do is you can have, let's say, this paragraph be a comparison and contrast paragraph. This paragraph, a, uh, a, a cause and effect paragraph. This paragraph right here, one filled with facts and statistics. So this will add to your style because it will show your reader, your professor, that you are engaging uh, uh, with various types of evidence. Okay, all right? Let's get to the last one right here. This is about clarity, okay? Uh, Lots of ideas here about how to improve your clarity. Of course, know the rules of grammar. But knowing the rules of grammar, I can't say that this is all that you need to do. I know many students who know the rules of grammar, but who cannot apply it to their own writing. Knowing the rules is important, but being able to apply correct rules to your own sentences, that is the most important, okay? So do online exercises to improve your clarity, all right? Do workbooks to improve your clarity. Read for style, grammar, and clarity. So when you're reading a book, sometimes if you want to improve your clarity and you know the rules of grammar, don't read for the content. Read for how did that, how did this writer construct this paragraph? He's starting off with a prepositional phrase. And then he moved into uh, a short subject with a very powerful verb. Okay, all right? Um, and one thing now, now that I'm on the uh, topic of verbs, okay? Note that as far as style and clarity is concerned, the verb is the most important word in the sentence. Choose verbs that show what is happening in the sentence. So for example, right now, it is not incorrect to say that Ben Voxiera says, I am saying something. Okay, all right? Ben Voxiera talks. But is that as precise as we can be? In fact, what I'm doing is, what would be more precise is something like Ben Baxiera lectures. Ben Baxiera explains. Ask yourself, is the verb that you are using the clearest verb uh, uh, to explain your sentence? One other thing about clarity. Many times clarity doesn't have to do with grammar. It has to do with the mindset. Many times, students, you, you, you are stressed out, right? You have bills. 
You have other classes, right? I believe that if you get yourself in, a, in an ideal state when you're writing your essays, and I can't say a perfect state, but your ideal state, it will greatly improve your clarity. Okay? All right. Now what I'd like to do here is I'd like to briefly give you an outline for an essay. Okay? And I'm going to invent a topic here. The topic is why write? Why write? So my topic is, right, I've been giving this, um, given this topic. What's the purpose of writing? Okay, all right? So, uh, and, and, and so, you know, some might say a pretty, you, have, you should have a pretty obvious answer for this. And you, you all have been writing for your entire lives. But you perhaps have never considered this question. What's the purpose of writing? Why do people write? Why do universities require their students to write, okay? So I'm going to give you an outline that is answering this question, okay? I am going to uh, uh, start with my thesis statement, okay, all right? Let's just imagine that uh, um, I've been brainstorming already about this. And I've talked to some people. I've read some works regarding why people write. So let's say, for example, I've read um, George Orwell's Why I Write. Joan Didion's uh, um, challenge to George Orwell's uh, essay called Why I Write. Um, James Baldwin wrote um, an essay called Autobiographical Notes in explaining what he thinks the purpose of writing is, OK? Now, after doing all that, you know, maybe going online because you have that capability now. You can go online, of course, and watch these beautiful, great videos, okay? All right? And uh, you research. This is my thesis. In order, uh, let's see, to discover. And activate my full potential. I write. Okay, so let's go over this topic sentence. Not a perfect topic sentence, all right? This is still a working thesis. I'm sorry, not topic sentence, thesis, okay? All right, so this is still a working thesis, but this is what I developed. And it didn't take me too long. I mean, I have been thinking about this, this topic for a while, okay? And this is what I come, came up with, all right? So what is it that I'm promising? Because remember, the thesis is supposed to control the entire paper, all right? I am promising that I will discuss how writing leads to discovery and also leads to an activation, uh, um, uh, an activation of potential. Okay, all right? I'm gonna prove that in my body, all right? But this is my promise to you, the reader, okay? All right? This is the way that I have outlined for this, all right? I'm gonna imagine that I have four body paragraphs, okay? And then, of course, my conclusion, all right? That ties everything together. <clears throat> all right? My first body paragraph, what I would do is I would discuss the concepts. What is this thing called potential and also this idea that we have mystery inside ourselves, inside self, okay? So I would discuss this because I do believe this. I believe that we human beings have these things buried inside of us that we don't even know about, right? And they're just waiting there to be discovered. I would have a paragraph about that and all the potential that's hidden inside of us. My second body paragraph would be about writing as a way 
to tap the source of our potential. And I would discuss, perhaps, based on some readings that I've done, or thinking that I have done regarding this topic about how writing is one way that people get into themselves and they tap something that they haven't known before. The next paragraph, I would specifically now talk about how writing leads to discovery. Okay, and at this point now, I am going to provide specific development to prove that point. Okay, so I would discuss for you in this paragraph things that I have discovered about myself personally, about uh, that I did not know about myself, that I learned through writing. So for example, something like how I have discovered you know that perhaps I'm selfish to a certain extent through my writing. Perhaps I've discovered certain mistakes that I've made in my past or ways to admit my faults. I've discovered that I love music through my writing, right? I've discovered a passion for a certain philosophy through writing, okay? And through thinking about that, through the page staring me back in the face, all right? Last body paragraph, I would discuss how writing leads to action. That's what I meant by uh, the thesis here, writing uh, as activation. So this last paragraph, what I would write about is that writing is not just a way for me to discover something and then I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Writing does that for me. Now I know I'm selfish, right? No, no. In my last paragraph, I would discuss how writing spurs me to do an action. So, since I, let's say for example, I, I, I learned that through writing that I, I've been selfish, perhaps I've been stingy. And it's a critique that I have for myself that I would like to work on. And in this last paragraph, I would give you examples of how writing has led to concrete action in my life. Through that, per perhaps, I've gone on to uh, um, try to be less selfish and be more giving to people, more giving with my time, more giving with my energy, okay? Uh, volunteering to do certain things. So through this last paragraph and through all of this here, my conclusion, I am going to restate uh, or paraphrase the thesis statement Okay, I'm going to give you my main points again, and I might want to leave you with something like uh, a writing is perhaps one of the most powerful tools that we have to investigate ourselves, change ourselves, and impact the world. Okay, that would be a conclusion. All right. Um, can't take questions, but I can take comments. If you have any comments, please leave them here on this uh, um, uh, YouTube channel, okay? Visit uh, the YouTube channel Barrio Bushido TV and also my writing blog called Todo Bodo Down. Uh, dot wordpress.com. You can also look for me. My name is Benjamin Baxiera. I'm an author. I've written a book called Barrio Bushido. And uh, you can find out much more about me and the things that I do. It has been my pleasure uh, this evening, it's my evening for me anyway, uh, to serve you. Okay? Take care. Goodbye.